Hi, you're, you're watching, watching Dante's, Dante's Boxing Nation. Nation. Woo! <laughs> now to give you some insight into Andre's preparation and mentality heading into the fight is his legendary trainer, Mr. Virgil Hunter. Thanks again for everybody showing up and turning out for this great event, an event of this magnitude, is deserving of the fans and pay-per-view. I hope the press really puts it out there, supports the fight, hypes the fight. It's a great fight between two champions. I'm glad to be part of it. See everybody in Vegas. Thank you, Virgil. Now the moment we've been waiting for. He is the last men's U.S. Olympic boxer to win gold, having done so at the 2004 Athens Olympic Games. His list of victories reads like a who's who of the super middleweight division, including Carl Frotch, Mikel Kessler, and Arthur Abraham, all of whom he defeated en route to winning the Super Six. He also dominated and knocked out former light he heavyweight world champion Chad Dawson in their 2012 showdown. In his last fight, he dominated Alexander Brand at the Oracle Arena in his hometown in Oakland. He is the pride of Oakland, California. He is a family man and a true athlete role model to all. It is my pleasure to introduce the best pound-for-pound pound fighter in the world, the face of the light heavyweight division and an athlete Rock Nation Sports is so proud to represent. With a record of 30-0 with 15 KOs, a man who hasn't lost a fight since the age of 13, it is my pleasure to welcome and to introduce Andre Ward. Kathy, I showed up. I made it. I made it. Uh, thankful to be here today. Um, I want to thank everybody that's associated with this event, uh, the media, uh, the good, the bad press, uh, all of it. Um, Obviously, HBO, Peter Nelson, uh, Rock Nation, main events, everybody that's associated with it. It's hard to name everybody individually, but, you know, it's a lot of people that, that you guys know of that worked on this fight to get it done, and it's a lot of people that you might not be familiar with, or you may be familiar with, but didn't know was working behind the scenes to, to get this fight done. It's a lot of different nuances that, that go into place to get a fight like this done, but it's done, and I think that that's what, you know, we all should focus on. Um, I thank God for this opportunity. I thank God for, you know, my career and, and, and being able to be at a high level through the peaks and valleys of my career as long as I have. Uh, sometimes that gets overlooked. You know, I'm a young veteran in the game. I've paid my dues and I continue to pay my dues. And uh, this is just another opportunity. You know, I've been in these positions before. Uh, so is my opponent. And it doesn't matter what the other side says, how they feel, what they say. He's got to get it done. I've got to get it done. And it's going to determine when those lights come on who executes and who gets it done when those bright lights come on. Um, and that's what it boils down to, and that's what I focus on. I don't have to throw chairs. I don't have to cuss. I don't have to act crazy to sell this fight. This fight is selling itself. And I know that what I possess and what I have is in me. It's not on me. I appreciate you. I'll see you November 19th. Thank you, Andre. I am so happy to see you. Um, and by the way, I just uh, before I introduce Sergey's manager, I just had one comment uh, for, for, for Mr. Prince. You know he can't bring his slingshot in the ring with him, right? Okay. Uh, and I'm not sure how I feel about the David and Goliath thing because it is kind of a pick 'em fight, but can't bring the slingshot. Um, and now, you know, we have a lot of bests here. We have the best fight that can be made in the box in boxing. We have two of the best fighters in the world. We have 
clearly the two best fighters in their division, and now I get to introduce the best manager in boxing, Agus Klimas. Thank you, Kathy. Good afternoon, everybody. <clears throat> Very proud to represent one of the best fighters in the world, Sergei Kovalev. We've been very long uh, road with him since 2009 when he came here to the United States, and um, uh, he never was uh, pushed by any media. He never was uh, mismatch. He never was. Uh, I, I don't even know how to say, but uh, protected. I would say, like nowadays, uh, many fighters are protected. Uh, many probably in this room knows how we used to go sit in a van and go from the East Coast, from a town to town, just to get a fight. He never asked me in his career who his opponent is. He just asked when I'm fighting and what weight it should be. Uh, again, I'm very proud to represent Sergei Kovalev, and uh, I wanted to thank Andre Wars team, uh, Rock Nation, for taking this opportunity and uh, putting the best fight, I don't know, is that say in a year or is going to be maybe in a decade. Um, as been talked earlier, it's going to be like 50-50 right now, and uh, Peter Nelson mentioned it's uh, who knows how it's going to end up a fight this a liar. But um, I want to thank our promoter, and Kathy Duva. She did a very, very good job uh, in Sergey's career. I uh, want to thank HBO, uh, T-Mobile Arena, MGM, everybody who was involved in this fight uh, to make this fight happen. And um, I'm a little nervous, a little excited. I'd never been before that, but... Uh, I'm looking forward for November 19th and hope to see you guys uh, in uh, Vegas November 19th. Thank you. And is now, it is now my pleasure to introduce the best trainer in boxing, John David Jackson. Hello, everyone. Uh, thanks for coming out and participating in this press conference. It's good to see some old friends here in New York City once again. Uh, this fight here is a, a very, it's a fight that the, the, band, the fans deserve to see. You know, uh, Andre Ward was a very good fighter, undefeated as an amateur and a pro. Just to be undefeated as an amateur is one hell of an accomplishment, trust me, with the bad decisions in boxing. So that alone speaks volumes for him. Then he's undefeated as a pro, very good pro. Uh, on the other side, you have Sergey Kovalev. He's a crusher. He does. He destroys. He seeks and destroys. So come November 19th, I expect a great fight between two very good fighters, and the winner deserves to become. He deserves to be pound for pound the best fighter in the world. Uh, what do you watch on pay per view? When you go to a bar, or whatever, just watch this fight. You know all the talk and all the other things. All that's done. Now it's time for preparation, and it's time to go to war. And that's what we're here for—to go to war. And come the ninth. 19th November, that's what you're going to see two Vega fighters striving to be the best and to be, I guess, number one for number one pound for pound in the world. And uh, we'll see what happens. So just, you know, be there, buy the fighter, show up. Either way, expect one great fight between two very, very good fighters. Thank you. Since the day I met this quiet, unassuming Russian fighter four years, a little over four years ago, all he's ever asked me to do is take him from one test to the next, take me from one challenge to the next, help me climb the ladder. He's done everything I've asked, and uh, he's kicked everyone's ass on the way up. <laughs> um, and, and so, uh, as always, it is my, my, my absolutely rapturous Rapturous pleasure to be able to introduce to you the WBA, IBF, WBO, light heavyweight champion in the world, uh, the person who I believe is going to prove to you in November that he is the best fighter in the world, and I know he is going to do everything in his power to do that. Uh, and so I, I, I 
It is my, my, my great pleasure to introduce Sergei Crusher Kovalev. Hello, everybody. Uh, I'm very glad to be here, and uh, I'm very excited for this opportunity to fight under war. And I want to thank to God for this uh, moment and in my career. Uh, also, I want to thank uh, all people who are involved for this uh, uh, for this uh, fight. Uh, to my promoter, uh, Katie Duva, and uh, Rock Nation, uh, to HBO pay-per-view, and to all my fans. Thank you for everything. And uh, November, I think, uh, it, it will be a fight uh, which we remember as a history and uh, we should be ready both of us uh, to give the boxing fans a great fight and uh, I don't know what to say more like just uh, welcome to Las Vegas and on HBO pay-per-view and we'll see a great fight thank you very much As you can imagine, it is not easy to make a fight like this, but here we are. Uh, I'm sure I speak for our friends at Rock Nation when I say that everyone who has been involved in this process deserves our thanks and appreciation. You all know who you are. Uh, speaking for main events, I especially want to thank Peter Nelson, Tony Walker, Jonathan Galst, and Ray Stallone from HBO and their capable staff, Richard Stern from the MGM Grand Resort and Casino and his staff, our sponsors, Corona and Rosneft, and the two, these two great competitors who have endeavored to, to find out exactly who is the very best in the world for all of us to watch. Um, I want to thank you for coming today. I hope to see you on November 19th at the T-Mobile Arena in Las Vegas. If not, we'll be on pay-per-view, 54.95. And now uh, we are going to open up the, the, the uh, Alan tells me we're going to open up the room to questions. Let's do that. And Ellen, you're in charge. <laughs> You got this one. Perfect, thank you. Actually, this might be more Lloyd Carroll from the Queen's Chronicle. This is more of a business question about your industry. Uh, there is a certain currency in being undefeated. I mean, certainly Mr. Mayweather understood that and maximized his value on that. Is that a concern, a loss of that currency for one of the fighters here? Maybe was there some thought of following the Mayweather pattern of let's maximize revenue until we can't do it any longer? I can give you the business answer. Sure. The, the business answer is that I believe that win in any cost model has done a lot of damage to our business in general. Over the, over the, since, since uh, someone took that as his guiding principle. So uh, I like to think that, I, I, you know, I'm, I'm old. I come from the time when Leonard and Hearns and Hagler and Duran and Holyfield and Bo, and, you know, I sound so old here, Tyson, uh, you know, fought each other. They actually got in the ring and fought each other. And, you know, boxing was a lot more exciting then. So, no, I don't think records matter nearly as much as great fights. Brandon Dietrich, uh, TrueBoxingHeads.com. Uh, this is for Team Ward um, and Rock Nation in general. Uh, do you think this fight will um, motivate Rock Nation in general for Ward and uh, take your promotional uh, team to the top? Because um, the last time Rock Nation had a big fight, it was Cotto Canelo, and uh, uh, Cotto couldn't get the victory. Do you think this fight will take Rock Nation over the top? Uh, I, I think we're at, top, at the top right now. Um, <laughs> You know, last year we did Cota Canelo. Arguably, this is even a bigger fight on the same weekend before uh, Thanksgiving. Um, obviously, we're very excited, you know, to, to be involved with main events. Uh, it's a big moment for Rock Nation. Uh, it, it, without a doubt, is a springboard to other opportunities. Um, but, but, you know, in a very short two years, 
our company has arrived. I mean, we got into this business to do big fights. Uh, we've proven that we can do big fights. Um, you know, like Kathy said, you know, we, we want to make the biggest fights in the world, regardless of whether somebody is undefeated or not. Um, and we're going to continue to do that. Hi, fellas. These Tino Lloyd Black Star News. Perhaps both to both of you. Uh, there was a lot of criticism because you guys didn't score knockouts in your last fights. Your know, fans are very hungry. Uh, was that purposeful to go the distance and get yourself in condition for this mega fight uh, and and uh, hold your knockout power in your in your reserve for this fight because this is the big one. I mean, I think, you know, I think it's important for everybody in the room, you know, to educate the boxing fans, general fans, casual fans on how the, how the sport works. You know, this is not a video game. You know, this is real life. And, of course, you would love to go in there and, you know, get a first-round knockout every time and, and, you know, have a spectacular performance every single time. And, and again, I like, treat it like it's a video game, but it's real life. You know, you, you, you do what you got to do. You do the best you can. And sometimes you get it, sometimes you don't. And I think, you know, sometimes there's too much stock put in the knockouts. Of course, they're great, you know, especially for, you know, the casual fan. Um, but personally, you know, I did the best I could uh, against a, you know, a 40-year-old veteran who didn't want to be knocked out, made it difficult, moved, held, did certain things. So um, I'm pleased I got the rounds. Uh, I wasn't trying to hold back. And, um, but I don't think that's going to have any bearings on this fight at all. I have a question for, whoop. Here we go. Um, you know, like uh, my my last fight was uh, was uh, against uh, Chilemba, and Chilemba good fighter, and uh, it, it was not not a plan to knock him out. You know, like and uh, because his style like uh, similar of uh, underworld, and uh, also I think so that I fought uh, good and. Uh, uh, we will bring, I will bring all my power on November 19 and uh, to get mm, victory by KO or uh, score decision, you know, it's, it, it will be depends uh, how I will be feel and uh, what will be my shape uh, after my preparation. I have a question for both Sergei and Andre. Uh, Sergey, did you see Andre's last fight, and what did you think? And Andre, did you watch Sergey's last fight, and what did you think, Sergey? <laughs> yes, I saw his last fight, and he showed that he can uh, boxing uh, uh, on the distance in a close fight, and uh, also that he he's feeling very. Uh, he feels uh, very comfortable in light heavyweight division, you know, and he's ready uh, for November 19. And November 19, he will be mm, much better or, or on the same level, you know. I will see in November. Like, I'm interesting too, you know. No, I haven't. I haven't had a chance to watch his fight yet. Uh, I didn't watch it because he wasn't, you know, my upcoming opponent. Um, but obviously, you know, as camp starts, you know, I have plenty of time to, to sit down and, and, and do the homework. And of course, you know, my team, my coach, he's, he's done his job. You know, he's always watching, but, you know, um, it didn't make any sense to watch the, that fight leading up to my fight. That's a good way to get sidetracked. Hi, my question is for both men. Um, obviously, with this fight being uh, for all the marbles, um, and the perception for Kovalev in the division is that he is the dominant fighter in that division, that Adonis won't fight him. What would possibly be next for either man after winning this particular fight? Do Ward, in your instance, do you stay the way you did at 168 and just dominate the division? And for Sergey, is there a possible move up in the future? Or what does either man do after this, being as though, like, you know, where do you go? <laughs> uh, we'll speak after the fight. I don't know what. 
what is next. Let's do this uh, job. Yeah, that's, that's, you know, putting the cart before the horse. I don't, you know, it's, you can't think like that, you know. Uh, no disrespect, but that's why you're good at your job, and that's why I'm good at mine, because you, you think ahead, and, and, and I can't afford to do that. So, uh, yeah, we'll talk after the fight. Good question. Questions for Sergey and Team Kovalev. Are, is the game plan for this fight going to be similar to the Hopkins fight, where you try to box and understand that Andre Ward's a guy who doesn't get abused in the ring, has great defense, timing, and balance, and just try to outpoint him? Is the knockout going to almost not even be on your mind unless it happens? I already, I already told about uh, any plans for the fight. I, I don't have any plans for my fights, you know. I just uh, get into the ring and make a fight. It, uh, for me, any boxing fight, like a street fight, just uh, with the rules uh, of boxing, you know. The <laughs> Antonio Baez, DC Mike TV. The question is for Andre Ward. What does a victory against Sergio Kovala does it? Do you feel like it cements, like it cements um, your Hall of Fame future? Uh, I mean, it doesn't hurt. That's for sure. <laughs> I mean, you know, at the end of the day, I, I know what I've accomplished, and you know, I feel like I have a, uh, I've done, you know, put together a good body of work. Um, but like I told the guys earlier. Uh, when I talk to the media, I don't have a vote, you know, so it's tough to say where I stand right now. But um, in my mind, you know, this is a must win. And I, I think, you know, mm -hmm. uh, with a victory here and becoming two division champion and beating a guy with the quality of uh, Sergey, it kind of leaves everybody without an excuse. You know, I feel like it does submit, you know, my status. But uh, yeah, absolutely. Thank you. I got three quick ones. Ladies first, uh, Kathy, another great job here, uh, first lady of boxing. What are the reservations in making this fight? And you said you were kind of, you know, glad to see Andre show up. Were there some reservations, some problems? Um, we had no reservations whatsoever. We're thrilled to make the fight, and Andre and I were just joking around. Mm -hmm. yeah. Andre, uh, the timing seems to be perfect here for you. You, know, you had some issues before. But now I feel that you're probably, the timing is perfect. Everything is right. You're, you're ready to go again. There were some things before that stalled your career, but Andre Ward is ready to rock and roll. You said, am I ready to rock and roll? No, I said, you are. I mean, you had some issues before. There were things, but I figured the timing right now is perfect for you. You can kind of go straight ahead again in boxing. Yeah, I mean, of course. Um, sometimes those things are necessary. Mm -hmm. You know, sometimes those things are necessary. Um, I don't know too many professional careers that were sustained for a significant amount of time that didn't have peaks and valleys, and sometimes those valleys are necessary. So um, I'm right on time, I believe, when it comes to my destiny and my purpose and where I'm supposed to be. So I agree with you 100%. Yeah, amen. Champ, um, you had a new baby. How much has that changed your life uh, inside and outside the ring? And congratulations on that. Yeah, I mean, you know, being a father, how has that changed his mind, perspective, and things? Uh, we, we, was my, uh, was it born with my son, right? Yeah, oh yeah. Uh, you know, like uh, it, uh, it, it's a huge kick to my ass, you know, like <laughs> to do my job like uh, more, much better than I did before, and uh, I'm happy, and I wanna make for him sister or brother, you know, we'll see. <laughs> God bless us. <laughs> but uh, Thanks, yeah, I'm very happy. I love my son and uh, I wish to him best of all, all of the best. Uh, yeah, uh, Andre Ward, in your last fight you picked a, a, an awkward kind of a fighter. What made you, you can't choose that guy? We didn't have a choice, trust me. <laughs> we had a list of guys that uh, 
we had a list of guys, and they started to fall off one one after another for one reason or the next. And you know, we looked up, and we were eight weeks out, and uh, you know, we got to a point on the list where Brand's name was called. So um, I knew he was going to be, you know, an awkward guy who, you know, he's got nothing to lose. You know, he's trying to upset the apple card. Uh, he's just an unpredictable fighter. I mean, you guys saw, it, but you know, a champion. Uh, and a guy who fights at an elite level, you got to be able to beat every style. That's not an excuse. You know, you have to be able to, to deal with everything. So that was my mindset going in. And once, once you know, Brand's name was called, and, and we took care of business. And Sergey, you uh, had a tough opponent, similar style to Andre Ward in some ways. Was it very awkward for you, and did you take from that? Yeah, Chilemba was uh, one of tough opponents, yes. But uh, but I got a winner over him, and uh, I'm ready for my next uh, test. Uh, fight under uh, under world, uh, this is a big test for me, for my next step in my boxing career, you know. And uh, it motivates me. Okay, we're done. <laughs> we're going to do a, a photo. We're going to Photoshop you. Sergey, you're going to come around this way. Andre, you're going to go around the other way. We're going to meet in the middle. I think they're going to move to the podium. We're going to go right where that is. Okay. Are you going to go there? Okay. Oh, bazooka. How are you? Congratulations to the kid. Last time I see you. Thank you. 